Composition is a hugely subjective and personalised process. Humans connect with music in all sorts of different ways and what motivates one person to compose in one particular way may not work for another and neither would be wrong in their respective approaches. Furthermore, some people will spend days or weeks or months refining and crafting a composition to get it to where it needs to be, whereas others may come up with things in a very short space of time. Some will connect emotionally with their compositions, whilst others will not at no point in any of these methods of working or in any of these approaches is, is anyone wrong. There's no right and wrong, because who's to say? what is right. If the end product is an enjoyable or an expressive or an interesting piece of music, what does it matter whether it took 10 minutes to make or 10 years? There are methods, processes and so on that can be taught and or practiced. These can help unlock or speed up certain aspects of the creative process or creative endeavour in general, but they're no by no means gospel or they're not the way, they are just options. After posting my mixed breakdown videos, Twitter user DonorLens requested I make a video that explores my composition process. DonorLens is actually two people. Uh, they're a musical duo who walk a creative line somewhere between vaporwave, uh, retrowave and arguably even draw on elements of like indie bedroom pop. They're two very nice individuals. Um, I've sort of worked with them. I've done a remix of one of their singles a little while ago uh, and both myself and Dona Lenz have released music on the same independent record label My Pet Flamingo. In other words they're not an unknown entity to me um, and we do chat from time to time on WhatsApp and Twitter about music and music theory and things like that. Anyway, so I mulled over how best to do this video for a couple of days. Um, as it's, it's a really hard thing to answer actually. You see, I tend to compose frequently, um, often in short, quite dense bursts of productivity. I might sketch out one or two songs a day for maybe a week and then bank them ready to enter the production process at a later stage. Working in this fashion means I'm rarely, if ever, really thinking about how I'm composing. I, I'm mostly, or entirely, working off of intuition and experience and I'm not consciously trying to compose in a particular way. There are a few instances where I have and in those instances I've actually documented them on my blog, most notably some ambient music that I made. Having never done any before, I decided to look into that and I kept a record of that in a written format. My composition process, which is just, it's mine. <laughs> you can borrow it if you like, you're welcome to it. Um, it's not scientific, it's very subjective. It's what, what I found has worked for me. I tend not to compose blindly, by which I mean I usually have a context of some sort in mind. It might be a picture, it might be a title, I might have already dreamt up a song title, which in itself will steer things in certain directions based on moods and feelings and what it suggests. It might be something as simple as a colour, uh, a word or a phrase that I've heard on the TV or the radio or in conversation with someone that I thought, that's an interesting combination of words or I like, I like the rhythm of those words or something. That's usually enough to get me going. Now that's abstract in of itself and that might put some of you off and that's fine but again this is just what works for me um, i quite enjoy abstract stuff from art to film to music so that's where i tend to go at things from from that abstract angle what does the color purple sound like that sort of thing i'm happy there so to take up donor lens's challenge of explaining my composition process which i've never really overly thought about because i've always just kind of done it and gone on with it um, I figured the only way to do it was to leave the camera rolling while I compose something. And I thought to keep it on theme, I'd take whatever my abstract idea might be from them. 
So after I decided I'd do this, I went to Donor Lens's Twitter feed, scrolled down a bit until I saw something that caught my eye. I quickly stumbled upon an atmospheric photo, uh, a seemingly empty restaurant amidst the current COVID pandemic lockdowns. The restaurants currently in the UK are shut. They're not, they're only allowed to be open for takeaway. It's quite an eerie photo taken with an artsy eye, atmospheric, spacious and lonely and had some nice blends of color. And the caption read, the local Tika takeaway is a locked down liminal space right now. As a lover of Indian food, the fact that they obviously popped out to get a takeaway and noticed that in this current lockdown climate, it very much looked like those kind of vapor wavy, trendy pictures that you see on the internet with this kind of purple wall and checkerboard floor. And it was cool, that was enough. Between the image and the word liminal, I know what kind of a musical feeling needs to fill this space. I'm gonna run with that. So what you're about to watch was recorded last night. I set up a couple of cameras. I had to fall back on using the nasty webcam camera at the top of my laptop so for some of it so some of it's a bit grainy but it's a stream of consciousness me composing a new song it's a stream of consciousness but there are some edits um that's down to camera battery the camera seems to time out at about 15 minutes because it doesn't let me record a file size bigger than whatever it is for the sd card so i periodically have to stop and start it the sustain pedal on the on the keyboard started to play up and latch on and not latch off. It's always always the way when you sit down to do something like this, something you use day in, day out, decides it wants to break. But it's for all intents and purpose, it is a stream of consciousness demonstration of me writing a song. I attempt to verbalise uh, what I'm thinking while I'm doing it. This causes me to actually work more slowly than I normally would because I keep having to stop myself from racing ahead and following my fingers and explain what I'm doing and why, or why I think I'm doing it at least. So with all that said, enjoy the next 50 minutes or so of me mumbling about odd bits of music theory at the piano while I compose something for the locked down liminal space that is Donor Lenses local Tika takeaway. So mixed up the camera setup good cameras on the keyboards dodgy facetime cam is on me because i only have one decent camera figured good quality footage better off on the keyboard than on my face i've set up a, a simple drum loop i've used some samples by the count he makes beats and produces and makes really good nice sample packs so i will link to that below because he's well worth checking out it's a bit lo-fi but it's nice i think it'll work for this thing if it doesn't i'll change it that's fine so Maybe it's synesthesia, I don't know. As long as I can remember, I've associated certain tones and colours together. So for me, the purple, for the purple of the wall in that, in that image is very much an A-flat. That sounds really pretentious and a bit abstract and I'm sorry, but this is just kind of the process I go through. Images, words with particular meaning, these sorts of things. Um, I find harmonic correlation that works with that. Now for me, that shade of purple leans me towards A flat, A flat major to begin with. Okay, so, but that's far too round and resolute for the concept of that image. Uh, the liminal, transitory, neither here nor there, that that suggests at some degree of motion, it suggests a, a degree of, of uncertainty or tension. So if you want to bring in uncertainty or tension, we can use suspended chords, twos, fours. Um, but again, there's that, although, it, although it's transitory, there's a certain dreamy quality about that image. Um, and so that naturally leans towards the major seven. And with the major seven, being all floaty and dreamy. However, it's a bit predictable, it's a bit cliched. Um, I use them all the time anyway, and I, I don't want it to be straight up where we're going with this. Um, I, I need something that suggests a, a touch more transition, a touch more tension, but still contains some of that dreaminess. Um, so I'm gonna lose the major seven, um, take it down to a six maybe. A six is a kind of, it's fairly bright, it's a bit uncertain. So we've got the A flat six. 
but I th it needs extensions up the top I think to make it dreamier so I think we can go to the third of the chord the C put that up the top but that's a big sparse gap here between that F and that C so I'm going to put the B flat there because that's the nine of the chord that's the why do birds yeah so I'm gonna have the we've got the, the six and the nine and the third all the way up there as well so that's a f that's somewhere where I'd go straight up for being sort of floaty to be a bit dreamy without just relying on your straightforward major seven in the left hand for now anyway it, left hand sort of goes out the window once the production starts because I'll focus more on what the bass is doing down there but, but yeah so so yes it's that it's in a in a weird way it's sort of like a C minus C minus seven with a four inverted and then I'll put that bum bum I'll get that for now for reference just to put a little bit of tension in there but for all intents and purposes, that's an A flat major seven. Let's think about it that way. And now, there are places where that naturally always leads, and that suggests to. Um, my gut feeling is that this isn't the root. This, you know, if it was the root, if this was our home, that's where we'd be going. My gut feeling is that this is the four, and that our home is at the E flat, <coughs> which means that these that's kind of to stay in key that's where we are my ears are telling me to follow that with a G minor 7 but because that feels so natural and so intuitive I don't want to do it I, I want to consciously go no I'm gonna avoid that that's when something's that intrinsically like it yearns to go to that place wait do go there at some point probably um, but hold out because then the payoff of going there is all the greater so I'm gonna I'm gonna stay here and then I'm gonna go close to it but not to it so I'm not gonna go there however let's consider what a G minor 7 is a G minor 7 is a B flat and a B flat coincidentally or not maybe that's why I want to go there to me a B flat is quite a bluish palish bluish color slightly sky blue um, and if you look at how the purple reflects the sunlight up onto the white ceiling it starts to have this kind of super pale teal aqua bluish tint to it ever so slight so just an off-white with a with the tiniest shade of blue which honestly like a B flat 9 that feels very like that especially if you throw the major 7 in which again okay, is a it's a D minor seven with a B flat bass, or even just an F with a B flat bass. It's got that kind of dreamy loftiness. So that's kind of where I want to go towards, but it's too obvious a payoff from here. Again, that's that's too obvious, and that's too obvious. The G minor seven is too obvious. So, so one thing I often like to do is to keep the right hand where it where it is, um, but maybe do something different with the left hand. Change the bass note up, um, putting the bass note the fourth of whatever minor chord you're playing is always a delicious way to elevate but provide uncertainty. So ba 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 one two three four. Um, so let's see. Oops. There we are. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna change this right hand. Let's keep that C at the top. So let's go from there to this kind of B flat sus two or F sus four or. D minor seven with a sharp five. But that's we'll do the C in the bass and we'll do, right. Let's try that. Oh, hello. Let's try that down here. What's 
happens do that down there what was it that was it that was it yeah that's like it, it it's really ambivalent and I like ambivalence it's, that's very effective so right that is our complicated manipulated equivalent of going um, and then if, if we're doing that my ears want me to go to a C minor it's very formulaic nothing wrong with that but I want to be a bit more ambivalent so so now I've got to get to something that sort of takes a C minor E root, but I'm already in the C on the bass. So how about F minor? That's mm, yeah, F minor's nice, but again, that's just straight up. That's big F minor seven with that nine on top. It's pretty. Is it quite the right tension and colour for what we need? I don't. I'm not confident. Let's try. <coughs> Let's go to that F minor, but... Let's just fill things in, eh? How about that? So we, we put the two in, and we put the four in. Mm, yeah. That's quite a nice... We're not quite sure how to feel with that chord either, are we? It's, there's so many clustered notes in there, it's not intrinsically obvious what to feel. Okay, so we're three chords in. We've got our... Now, like I said before, our home is E-flat. Home is not transitory. Home is not liminal. Just like the picture suggests, this is everything's got to maintain this sense of up in the air, which comes through twos and fours and sixes and major sevens and minor sevens and these sorts of things. And from there, we do not want to go home. We do not want to go straight back to where we were either. You know, we got that. Uh, I think we need another chord just to sell it and this time we need to go somewhere where people really aren't expecting now so for this I'm going to be breaking out the key signature but to do that you know you don't just randomly play any old thing you, you look for what notes you're using and what chords are nearby outside the key that will share one or two or three of those notes in this case, I'm using loads of notes. So, um, let's see, we can... Oh. Okay, so we've got an A flat, which is where we started. We've got the E flat, we've got the B flat, and we've got the F. Let's take that B flat and the F and kind of go a semitone, semitone up and a semitone down. It's quite typical jazz stuff. My piano teacher, when I was about 14, 13, he used to tell me if you're going to go anywhere, if you're going to go anywhere with chords, try to include semitonal things within that. So let's go. That that works. That's a semitonal thing. Um, also, just like a mental note, this is something I know that if you're in the key of whatever key you're in, we're in the key of E flat, and the, sem the semitone up from that as a major seven will always have that kind of ooh, niceness. Whatever key, let's say we're in just in C, all the white notes, and then we go C sharp major seven, and then back down to C. That's the turnaround in Mario Galaxy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Uh, 
sort of it's not formulaic but it is formulaic you'll hear it a lot in movie soundtracks and theatre and things like that so yeah whatever I don't know and then let's head back up to that A flat then that's where we were no it wasn't we were there that's where we were I haven't had any melodic thoughts yet, uh, but normally what starts to happen at this stage is that the, the top note of whatever I'm playing on the, the chords starts to lead me into a melodic frame of mind. So at this stage I'm starting to hear things, or I, you know, I'm sort of, I'm holding back because I can feel my fingers wanting to go to places. So if we've got that, we've got that C, making that octave jump yeah so let's try that oh get it right and now if you imagine if i if i was i'm already as well thinking arranging head get a moody electric piano sound doing those chords and have some kind of super indistinct kind of distant -y, saturated in reverb synth just kind of off in the distance or something maybe with like a, a nice kind of quarter note or half note de delay on it yeah anyway yeah, so that's Oh, now you see there's a mistake, I just got my timing wrong and I went too slow on the chord change, but I think I prefer that, let's try that. Oh no, that's better, right, I'm running with that. By the way, that I'm on that, and then I went. Um, what force of habit? Little touch of jazz. I always put weird thing, silly little bits like that in when I'm just mucking around playing at home. Ah, anyway, uh, right. So. that in to the beat that bad boy I talked about that before it's nice and handy I, I played it wrong or different or but I I didn't play exactly what I played when we were just doing it before um, nah, whatever like get it in like you know this, this is an exercise in seeing something and interpreting it musically there's no rights there's no wrongs and sometimes you've got to just trust your fingers are doing on the instrument you can't always try and have a mathematical or analytical head about it just 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 go with the flow a bit So it's, I think it's sufficiently dreamy without being like cheesy dreamy. 
if that's a thing. Um, I think it's up in the air enough, yet grounded enough without ever feeling too floaty off or too, too resolute, you know. It's, there's, ad there's, there's sufficient ambivalence, neither here nor there, which is what I wanted. So let's, um, take that again now then it's just down to following your fingers like that last bit I, well firstly like I played it wrong again but I think we'll make it right because I think it was quite nice um, secondly that little bit at the end I don't know I just went there just felt like it in that moment um, that's like you take a chord and you put the chord the, the two note of whatever the root of the chord is so there I was on a F sharp or a G flat whatever you want whichever you prefer and I played a A flat or G sharp in the bass and I just took that up a, up a tone and you know to again let's let's do it on all the white notes where it's like if you're a beginner piano player it might be a bit easier to wrap your head around that's a C you, C is one so you play a D in the bass, but still play a C in the right hand. It's that simple. And you, that's got elevation, that's got lift. Um, I use those all the time, all the time in, in loads of my music. Force of habit, my fingers often just fall on those. And I wasn't really even paying attention there. I was just thinking, man, I'm having to hold this chord a long time. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of the rock with you chords, you know. Um, hey, what will Quincy do, right? Let's have a listen to that then and see where we're at so far. So that's now leading us, isn't it? That's very leading. That suggests a moving somewhere. <laughs> you know. It's a very sort of Bacharach esque. We don't want to be that schmaltzy because this isn't a this is a very ambivalent thing we've got to hold that kind of neither here nor there thing um but i mean we, we can circle back round to that again Something 
flat major so that sounds kind of nice technically modulates us out into I think that modulates us down to D flat doesn't it yeah it takes them right interesting By the way, I, I don't really think consciously about theory when I'm when I'm doing this. I'm I'm mostly just following my fingers and my ears, and like I said, what my piano teacher told me: find a find a note, find find one note that is shared with another chord that's somewhere different, and in, keep that in whatever chord change you're doing, and also, if possible, keep semitonal changes somewhere. So not all the notes change semitonally, but whatever chord you go to, if there is a semitonal move, either up or down, try and make that happen. And then the next chord after that wants to continue that. So if you are descending or ascending, you know, have your have your semitonal moves of notes nested within your chords. Keep doing that. And that's you can see we're kind of doing that here. I, I, part of me really wants to go here but I, again when I really want to go somewhere that's that's my body's way of saying not yet hold out oh, where did I say we needed to go to before G minor G minor over C was it or I think it was that that <laughs> they're like you know, you'll hear that sort of stuff all the time on on my own stuff and generally if you listen to like city pop and fusion from the 80s like it's all yeah it, yeah it's it, it's that my minor seven with the nine over the top and then the next the next minor seven up but then like i said before put the fourth of that chord in the bass note yeah, yeah. we'll probably go there at some point just to pay that off because it's such a satisfying but it's it's quite used so we don't want to go too overboard with it so do i want that i'm not sure i do Let's just from down. That's a, a C sus4 to C over E, E being the third note, of the middle note of the C chord. I'm throwing the seven on for colour, so. And seven, just straight up sevens. Great tension devices again. They always want to take you somewhere else. C sevens normally want to resolve to an F as we're in the key theoretically of E flat, the F's a minor and you know for fun we're throwing we're throwing the nine and the four or the two and the four on it. Yeah. I 
that one more time because I didn't quite play the bass notes right. Um, Don't go down to that E flat the first time. That's a little. That felt like a chorus type thing if we consider that maybe the first part's like a, a verse intro that can be duplicated as the verse and then the beat comes in it's never that fast it's never that resolute uh, I might slow it down even more don't know yet it's all MIDI at this stage so whatever the sounds just some 80s FM piano presetting logic it's quite nice actually I might run with it um, Having that one bar of C7 just offsets the, the the body count of just always sort of falling on the fours and the eights and the sixteens. You've got that one extra bar, so that's nice. A bit of subverting expectation. Um, let's let's run it from the top. I think I've basically got like verses and choruses put together for that now. Um, what I'd normally do at this point is copy, paste and slightly embellish arrangement wise. Um, and then the other thing we'd need to work on is some kind of midsection um, to do something different. Let's think where we can take these things because Something I often do is put in a midsection that lifts or elevates or goes down or goes somewhere different before returning. Um, so, we're in E flat, except we're avoiding E flat like the plague. We're staying well away from it because we don't want that resoluteness. We want transitory. We, we, we want these chords that lift and pull and mm, are they here, are they there, we don't know what they mean, we don't know what they feel, they'll mean something different to everyone. Um, they've definitely, for me at least, got a sort of purple, white, pale blue sound aesthetic at this stage. There's no sort of bright greens or bright yellows. Uh, or bright reds maybe I don't know that's I don't see it but I I feel the colors if that makes sense oh, I hate talking about this stuff because it makes me sound like a pretentious prat but it, it you asked you asked about the composition process and I'm afraid that's what goes goes through the mind a bit um, <laughs> right anyway so in a weird way this has become our home and this and that makes sense because F minor is the relative minor to A flat major right oh that was right I said we were going to pay off with that didn't I so dun, 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 dun. maybe maybe we ought to reward the listener with a little bit of 
a little bit of gravity. Um, so if we're coming off that. And because we've been playing with the harmonic rhythm, haven't we, as well? I should should have, I don't know if I mentioned that. But anyway, this more chorusy bit. Dun, dun, dun. Chords are more regular, that's why I'm sort of vibing on that as the chorus. And so if we come out of ba 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 Maybe it still feels a touch a touch hackneyed. Even in my own stuff, I've done it so much. I've got some stuff coming later this year. It's got lots of that vibe going on in it, but more of that later. Mm. We could do the plastic love thing. You all know that. So when I get stuck like this, I go to melody again, kind of like I did before, fo follow my nose a bit on, on what the m melody wants to do. Taking me, it's taking me up to that G, that's the problem. It, it's taking me up to that G, which is just such a natural extension off of F minor. But let's think if we could go. I do like that chord, which is kind of the plastic love chord. Um, if you don't know plastic love, you know plastic love. So, um, it's the it's a minor major seven, but you slap one two three four the four bass note again. Oh yeah, boy. Anyway, um, so it's a funny chord to start on though. It's a little bit too dissonant because maybe now is the time to to pay off <laughs> we've used a C7 although maybe nah nah I don't want to use that again you got A minus 7 a minus seven over a D is a nice place to go. Four in the bass again, so let's try that. It's quite quite floaty, quite lifty. I use those sorts of things a lot though. Um Oh C minor. C minor is relative minor to E flat. Um, that will give us a sense of resolve and home, won't it? Of course. I know it's a minor major seven, but 
I in the last couple of years I've come to think of it as the plastic love chord because that song is so, was such a sort of bizarre cult phenomenon justifiably so it's a beautiful song but um but yeah it, it encouraged me to use it more anyway um all right We'll use it sparingly. Okay, we'll da 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 ba 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 da ba ba, and then we'll go somewhere else rather than repeating that, because. You know, you can imagine like a Motown record or a Bacharach record having that kind of thing doing doing the rounds for eight times, whatever horns, brass, loads of backing vocals. It would be beautiful, but we won't do that because that's not what we're about with this song. This is transitory, it's liminal, it's a restaurant that can't really properly open and would normally open at night anyway. So I always think places that only open at night being open in the daytime have a funny aura about them. There's a, there's a weird loneliness to them. And you know that in a few hours time they're going to be bustling and full of people having a good time and it will be dark outside and all the light would be artificial and I don't know. Anyway, anyway, right. Da, 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 ba, da, ba. We'll use that, we'll use that and then because that will reflect back to the verses and the chorus. And, um, da, ba, ba, ba. And then we'll and then we'll go back to the G minor, but put the C in the bass and not have that high B flat. Hello. Bear in mind I'm playing it too fast. Let's think about the beat here. Okay. I hung on that chord because I forgot what I was going to do next, or maybe we hadn't decided. I don't think we decided, have we? No, we hadn't decided. We hadn't decided what we were going to do next. But actually, just hanging on that felt quite good, didn't it? Let's um, let me capture recording that. Let's have a listen. I just went and did the twiddly bit at the top and then I forgot what I needed to do next and that took me half that half that bar to remember and then I was like oh yeah and so I played the chord late but even when you know <laughs> this comes from years of gigging right you forget what chords come in next and then you remember and you know it's too late for beat one but you just wait until a, a slightly funky interval like I've done there a beat 2.5 and come in on that yeah that's uh Hashtag musician life. Yeah, man. Let's just hang on that. <laughs> this random bit at the end here is just, just like capture recording because I just touched those chords very quickly. So we we'll ditch those. I wonder if that in of itself will be adequate to loop. Okay, so we've got that G minus seven, and I think that should just hang and then loop that 
that loop that sort of middle eight section if you like um, but we'll just try and vary it slightly so we got that uh, yeah let's take that top line up Over there, no, yeah, I think I think that's it, it's yeah. This little section is giving us a little bit more tension release, tension release, sort of textbook songwriting stuff. But um, I'm I'm reckoning by this time because I'll I'll kind of copy paste fair uh, ad variety copy paste ad variety to bits and bobs of what we did earlier before getting to this section. So I think that will be adequate payoff for the listener. Um, yeah, so what... Da, 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 uh, so all I'm doing there, G minor seven, with that nice sus four as the top note in the melody, da, da, which again is tension, and then that's a B flat minor seven, which drop that down to the six, so B flat minor six. It's <laughs> decisions, decisions. Do I give it a D flat bass or an E flat bass? Let's see. I think the E flat bass. The D flat bass is kind of darker though. I uh, no D flat bass. And that's again like those kind of changes because a bit what I'm doing here is going B flat, B flat minor, and it's honestly it's the bass note that's determining the, the feeling there. So you put the G, the relative minor to B flat under the B flat. And then you know, so really all you do, it's what I went back to saying before about you, you keep chords, you change to chords that have many of the same notes, but you introduce, you introduce key breaking chord changes by moving in semitones. So. So there's many of the same notes there. It's just we've dropped that D to a D flat and then the bass just gives us that uh, well, and last time I went there right so this time I'll keep it a bit more open and airy so uh, and then the plastic love minor major seven. Ba, ba. Yeah, let's let's put that in. Let's see. Keep that hanging for a long time. One, two, three, four. And then I'll probably just slap the dun, 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 after that because I think that, that will work nicely. Put some ethereal sounding kind of breathy, like high, like dun, 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 over the top and get some slightly ambivalent moody sounding synth that's a bit more than a sine wave but not a lot more doing the melody line nothing too biting or cutting it's not a we don't want we don't want to get carried away with sharp or not mute not tuning sharp just jaggedy sharp we don't want to get carried away with those kind of tonalities too much i think we need a spacious kind of floaty lofty ethereal ambivalent i keep saying it but that's what we need we need that that 
space and that uncertainty which you create with soft tones and delay tails and reverbs and stuff like that um and then may rather than just opt for a fade out at the end we'll probably da, 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 <laughs> I would quite like to finish it. That, this, this is like a jazz thing, right? Um, let's revert to C for a moment for a bit of explanation. So if you're in the key of C and, and you're playing a jazz ballad or a jazz tune in C, C major, um, let's say, let's say you're kind of doing that semitonal thing, E minor seven, E flat dominant seven, D minor seven, whatever that is. That's kind of like a D flat six with a two and a D flat seven with a two and a six. And then instead of resolving nicely onto C, land on the C in the bass, but just do something else in the right hand, normally playing like the a major chord of the one up. So so a D major. So da, 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 da. Again, it's a bit hackneyed, it's a bit cliched, but it is effective and you know those kind of things are fun. Another thing, E major. That's really powerful because the root note of E major is E, which is the major third of a C chord. So we've got a C, our ears want to go there, but instead we go there and we go there. So it's in really it's a C augmented major 7. But whatever, it's an E over C man, like there we go, isn't it? It's delicious and that's what we kind of did that's what I just did there so that's maybe a touch dark for for what what we're leaning out but I think we need that degree of kind of unresolved at the end maybe an F over F major over an E flat so da, 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 da. is about to die let me sort that out right so yes touch too dark that's got a nice degree of suspense to it um, but it maybe it's just about making sure we find a way to work into it that doesn't sound too random or too jarring or too pretentious so Let's try putting the beat to it. loads of things do ups and downs and do you know up in the scales and capture that so you know so when it lands on I'll have like whatever synth was doing the lead do some big up and down some scales and drift off into the reverb bring the top end right down yeah something like that well I hope you found that interesting or stimulating or curious or something i hope it wasn't boring essentially i found it interesting from a quite self-indulgent perspective where i've never videoed myself composing before and it was a 
a bit of a surreal experience to watch back. I did spot a couple of moments where I could tell by my face and also by what my ears were telling me I needed to do next. I could tell that where I sort of stopped myself to explain what I'd done, that a light bulb for what to do next had gone off. And by the time I'd finished my explanation and come back, that light bulb had fizzled out and gone away and I'd completely forgotten what that next idea would have been. Undoubtedly, if I wasn't talking my way through it, it may have shaped up slightly differently, but it's interesting nonetheless. I, you know, I don't harbour any ill feeling about that. It's purely a curious observation. I'd love to do a fully documented production process for the whole thing to get it through to a finished song from the point it's at. Um, I just haven't got the computing power. It's just not technically feasible and it will probably get a bit boring, to be honest. There'd be a lot of me just mumbling to myself while I tweak compression settings, which, yeah. Anyway, what I will do is either using this camera or just with my phone, whatever. I will quickly like grab little snippets of things as and when I do them, if I think they're interesting. And, and I'll compile that for the next video. <laughs> assuming that it all comes together all right and at the end of the next video we'll get to have a listen to what the end product shaped up like i hope at least i, I don't really know where i'm going with this yet it's still an unproduced piece of music and relatively unplanned and i'm i seem to be talking and setting deadlines for myself so great um right this is youtube you know what to do stay safe and happy music making